Hi, this is Mike Stryko with the Devers Eye Institute in Portland, Oregon. I wanted to share with you two cases of DMEC, or Decimase Membrane Endothelial Keratoplasty Surgery, combined with cataract surgery. Both cases highlight slightly different uh, aspects of the surgery. You'll see I've made marks for I'm putting my incisions so they're easier to find later. I use one millimeter diamond blades to make uh, my paracentesis. I make them fairly flat so that the wound architecture is square and seals well, which is what I'm showing with the forceps there. I'm injecting a cohesive viscoelastic to maintain the anterior chamber during the surgery. Now I'm using a preset diamond knife. It's set to 300 micron depth to make a groove that'll aid in suturing the wound very nicely later. I'm using a 2.4 millimeter diamond keratome to make my main incision that I'll do the cataract surgery through and then enlarge slightly later on. I think it's important to keep the capsular rexus fairly small so that the intraocular lens is stable. And this part I've sped up. Uh, it's just my standard cataract surgery using a uh, chopping technique. And we clean up the lens and then remove all of the uh, cortical material of course and with that nice small rexus we should have a very stable lens iris diaphragm. I do enlarge the wound slightly because I'm going to have to enlarge it for the injector later anyway and through that incision I place the intraocular lens. I'm using a little helon to elevate the iris and now I'm going to go into that little pocket with a 30 gauge needle that I've bent the tip on I'm going to make a small peripheral iridectomy with this needle and I'm going to scratch down on top of it with a Sinsky hook and I'm going to pull to enlarge it and these amazingly are quite slit-like post-operatively but they get the job done for the first week of preventing pupillary block while there's air or gas in the eye. I put in a little more cohesive viscoelastic and this is an 8 millimeter marking template that I'm making a small impression in the cornea with. And I'll dry off the surface so that I can identify that impression and then I'll mark it with ink so that it's easier to find. And this will serve as a template for where I'm going to remove the patient's decimase membrane and for where I'll line up the graft later on. Using a reverse Sinsky hook, I go right along that line. I really want an 8 millimeter uh, resection. With the sake, I tend to strip inside of that. With the mech, I like to go all the way out to my 8 millimeter zone. I really take my time with this step. I want to make sure that I just break Decimase membrane and I do not engage the stromal fibers. I want to have a smooth as possible bed without any stromal fibers that could get in the way uh, of adherence. You'll see her surface is not that great. That's from long-standing edema. Preoperatively, she had 2100 vision best corrected. You'll see now I'm just gently peeling in the decimase membrane into the center of the eye and just really taking my time not to uh, engage any of the stroma whatsoever. Once I get it in the center I give it sort of a little bit of a swirl and I'm pushing up on the decimase. I'm always trying to rub the patient's decimase onto the remaining decimase so I'm not directly touching the stroma with the tip of that uh, reverse Sinsky. And just it really is easier to see there with the red reflex behind it and just giving it a swirl making sure it's all disconnected and removing it with a pair of forceps. Now I'm testing to make sure that my glass Jones tube is going to fit for the uh, graft insertion. It was a little tight, so I just enlarged the wound slightly with a crescent that's about 3.2 millimeters in width, but the Jones tubes can vary slightly, so it is important to check your fit. Now I'm using an irrigation aspiration to make sure that there's absolutely no cohesive viscoelastic left in the eye. And I'm going to inject a little myocol here to bring the pupil down because I want the iris to protect the graft from the intraocular lens. And I'm gen just gently stroking the iris to help to bring down the pupil and getting that little air bubble out of there. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the donor table. I'm using pre-stripped tissue from Lion's Vision Gift and you'll see that it's marked with an S stamp and I like to stain it first just a quick 10 second stain with some tripan blue so I can see the edges of the graft and see if there's any areas of damage to the graft. 
So we're generally very, very well prepared grafts. I put it on a Moria punch. I do prefer Moria punches because I find that they're sharper than other uh, brands. And I tap gently on all quadrants of the punch to try to get a partial thickness trephination. And once I have that partial thickness punch, I break the decimase membrane and peel it. So I'm peeling the peripheral decimase membrane. And mind you, this is already pre-stripped with a hinge. And uh, the hinge is towards that notch in the sclera. I'm using a little balanced salt solution, a little BSS to help to elevate the graft. And then I grasp a free edge with a tying forcep and elevate it completely out of the corneal scleral cap and then put tripan blue in. So I have about a 50-50 mix of tripan blue and BSS. And here I'm using a remnant of the discarded decimase membrane to test my injector. Now I'm using a Maricel sponge to drain all the fluid away, taking care to stay away from the graft so that it doesn't stick to the sponge. And then I float the graft in a pool of balanced salt solution and direct some BSS at the graft to try to get it into a double scroll conformation if possible. This one wanted to stay in a single scroll, and so then I just aspirate it straight off the punch block. So I've only touched that graft once with forceps at the very edge. It's really a one-touch technique. Then get the graft loaded in the injector, get it snugly into the eye, and short, quick bursts of fluid, not overpressurizing the eye. There I'm decompressing the paracentesis. Let me give it another jet of fluid. I got the graft to turn 90 degrees, so I think I'm in good shape for removal. But you see, you really have to watch out. And that's why I chose to show this uh, movie. It really shows that the graft likes to follow fluid currents, and that graft wanted to come out. And there I'm kind of trapping with my cannula and then removing the injector. Really need to keep the eye at a low pressure so that the graft does not follow fluid out of the incisions. I suture the incision with a single suture. And now I'm starting the, the DMEC unfolding dance. Every graft and every anterior segment can behave a little differently. So you can see it's, I'm tapping, but I'm kind of at a 50-50 there, so it's hard to open that. So I give it some bursts of BSS along the iris to help unfold it, but I can see it's upside down. Uh, the S-stamp on the edge shows that it's upside down, so I roll the graft over. I let a little fluid egress out to let that flap open up towards me temporally. Now I'm going to apply some pressure over the temporal aspect of the graft, not pinning it, not smashing it, but then tapping the rest of it out. And this diagram shows what I'm doing. I'm pushing down on the blue arrow, not pinning or smashing the graft, but shallowing the anterior chamber to use the iris as a third hand to hold the graft, and then tapping where the orange arrow is to help to unroll the graft in the direction of the deeper anterior chamber. I'm going to show you that section once again. So here I'm pushing down to shallow the anterior chamber with my left hand and tapping with the right hand to unroll towards the deeper section. So now we're in pretty good shape. We have an S stamp confirming the correct orientation and additionally the graft edges appear that they're scrolling towards the cornea which is the correct orientation with the endothelium on the outside of the scrolls. I'm gently bumping the uh, near the edge of the graft to shimmy the graft into position and a couple small taps to help to open the edges. You can see that nice S stamp at 12 o'clock on the screen that's confirming the graft orientation. And now that I have it in, in good position, I'm going to carefully get a cannula with 20% SF6 gas uh, just under the graft and above the iris, careful not to touch the graft. I'm going to slowly inject a bubble and then fill the anterior chamber with that SF6 gas to hold the graft in position. I elevate the pressure and I leave it elevated for about two minutes at a fairly high pressure. At this time I then go ahead and permanent tie my slip knot and rotate and bury that. And I leave it at a higher pressure for two minutes and then I reduce the pressure to a more physiologic pressure. I aim for a pressure of around 20 for the next eight minutes, and I leave the eye fairly undisturbed. Just taking a look there at my S stamp that confirms the graft orientation and looking at the graft edges, you can see there's a very minimal area where the graft does not overlap any of the host decimates, just a real thin spot of bare stroma. That'll fill in with endothelium quite quickly.
Now I'm injecting balanced salt solution into the pupillary area to make sure there's no gas trapped behind the iris. The iris is staying nice and flat. It's not being pushed forward. I don't feel that I have gas trapped behind the iris. Now I'll titrate that SF6 gas bubble to about 80 to 90 percent fill of the chamber. So I know when she sits up that that inferior PI will be open and will prevent pupillary block. I'm very careful with the pressure at the end of the case to make sure that it's not too high. I put a collagen shield on that's been soaked in antibiotics and steroid and then remove the speculum and I do patch and shield overnight. I don't need to see the patient again until tomorrow morning. Now I'm going to show you the same patient but it's her second eye, the right eye this time. I just think it's an interesting exercise to look at how a different graft affects the surgery on a very similar anterior segment. I've already completed the cataract surgery and I'm doing the same graft preparation steps. I always grasp the graft near the notch in the sclera because that's where it's hinged. So when I tilt it and pour the fluid off, it helps to flatten the decimase where it's already been pre-stripped. And again, I'm punching with a 7.5 millimeter Moria punch. I think the Moria punches are the sharpest and I like them the best. I peel off the peripheral decimase that can be used for practice on loading the injector. Then use balanced salt solution to elevate the graft, just gentle jets of BSS. And once I have the graft nice and free, I'll use tires to grasp the graft. And again, that's the only time that I touch the graft that's going to be implanted uh, with forceps, just that one pickup. And now I add tripan blue to the well that already contains BSS and put the graft into that mixture. And I let it soak for about four minutes. Three to four minutes is sufficient to get a nice deep blue stain. And then I gently use a Maricel sponge to remove the fluid. I find it's best to position it uh, not towards the edge of the graft, but towards sort of where the graft is pointing. It makes it less likely to jump to your sponge. I then float the graft in balanced salt solution. I then aspirate the graft into the modified Jones tube that I developed specifically for Demex surgery. Once it's loaded, I can introduce that into the patient's eye. And again, I've already done a test fitting, so I know that that injector was going to fit. Make sure not to overpressurize the eye, and I'm going to release some fluid through the paracentesis. And this just shows you that different grafts behave differently. This time the graft went in, and it's a very, very flat graft. It's not scrolling tightly on itself at all and just wants to open in position. The S-stamp is already showing me that it's right side up. I'm going to put a very small bubble. I use a TB syringe and I set it to 0.2 mLs and I just inject a 0.2 mL bubble. That's much easier than trying to inject a similarly sized bubble with a larger syringe. Now I'm moving the eye in the direction I want the graft to move and then applying taps and sweeps to the graft to move it across the cornea. Uh, once the small bubble is in the eye, the Demet graft behaves more predictably, more like a DeSate graft, because there's a little friction now between the graft and the patient's cornea. And also we know that we're assured the endothelium is protected because the graft is already floated up. Now I'm going to lock it in place with a full fill of SF6. That's 20% SF6. And like I said before, I like to do a higher pressure fill for two minutes and then a physiologic pressure fill for eight minutes and I still suture my incision closed even if I didn't have to earlier on. I do think it's a good idea to suture the incision as soon as possible. Now I'm going to adjust the size of the gas bubble because I've already had my 10 minute timeout, and I feel certain that there's no gas behind the iris. I'm going to refill a little bit more and leave behind about an 80% gas bubble and I put on that collagen shield soaked in antibiotics and steroid. And that's the end of her case. I hope you found it interesting and informative to watch the same surgery on the same patient on two different eyes with two different grafts to see how different grafts can react. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And for additional training or information, please don't hesitate to contact me, Mike Stryko, at Devers Eye Institute in Portland, Oregon. This technique that I've shared with you has really helped me offer wonderful results for my patients. I hope that by putting it on YouTube, it will help other physicians deliver great results to their patients as well. It truly is a great and exciting time to be a cornea surgeon. 
Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.